Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Product in Focus. So the terror attacks across over in, um, in Paris initially caused the global markets to sell off uh, towards the end of the session there on Friday evening. We actually gapped down a little bit lower this morning on the US 30, as you can see here. We've already made a little bit of gain back up to the bottom of um, Friday's candle. Nevertheless, potential support is at 17.034. General theme that we're seeing this morning, following um, following the Paris, is uh, a kind of wait and see approach. You've seen a little bit of interest in the U.S. dollar. Uh, certainly, you've seen interest in gold. Gold spiked a little bit higher. Uh, it's not had a huge impact on on the global markets currently. Uh, and uh, oil prices are still quite low. They've been lower at the end of Friday's session. They managed to bounce back a little bit. But we'll come back to that in a second. So. Where we are, we've had the bounce first thing this morning. We had been slightly lower, actually. So it looks like we, we gapped lower uh, and then moved lower only for us to then bounce. Uh, but 17.034 is the potential support from back here in December. Uh, and that looks to be quite an interesting strategic level. So we're in the middle of the two ranges right now. You've got 17.361 uh, being the next potential resistance and then this being the next potential support. So moving on to the UK 100, it also had a bounce gap lower again, commodity heavy uh, and uh, copper and uh, West Texas crude not really doing a huge amount this morning. Um, 6,073 is the support level from back here on October. Uh, we've not had a proper technical break of this level, but it looks to be that 6073 is going to be quite strategically important in the short term as well for the UK market. So jumping on Japan 225, uh, gap lower again, bounced higher. Uh, we are looking at uh, 19104, which is the tip of this candle here from July as being the potential support. That would also coincide to the 21 period SMA. More economic data that came out of Japan this morning. Uh, I think uh, slightly disappointed by quite a lot. If you look at GDP, in fact, uh, they were expecting something a little bit uh, better right there, but uh, it, it did fail. Uh, but again, that just adds more onus on potential monetary policy, uh, stimulus, sorry, in Japan 225. Um, so that's why that market's not reacting in a negative way to the uh, to that uh, macro data coming out. So having a look at dollar yen, you can see that the US dollar had a bit of a bounce as for the US dollar sometimes can be a flight to safety, um, but I would have thought the yen actually would have benefited a bit more. But um, the, ben the reason why that's not been the case is the weak GDP figure that's come out makes it look like that there's gonna be monetary stimulus, more QE, it actually weakens the Japanese yen. So uh, usually the yen is a safe haven, but people have been jumping on gold because it has got the biggest potential because it's been squeezed so much over the last couple of sessions. So that's kind of where we are for with uh, dollar yen. 121 80, spot 87 is a potential support level to be aware of. So moving on to West Texas. So West Texas uh, came off quite aggressively there on Friday. It has been lower. The candle that we've seen so far today is indicative it gapped up, um, but it's not really doing a huge amount so far today. Looking at it from an intraday chart perspective, uh, it's slowly grinding higher, but uh, I don't think the fundamentals really have changed that much. 41.99, basically $42 is going to be a potential resistance. Longer term potential support, as you can see, it's the tip of this, uh, tip of this candle down here, 37.50 as a potential support. So let's have a look at gold. So gold's had a decent bounce, but it could be capped by this potential support level at um, basically $1,100. This is very interesting for gold, very strategic level. Keep your eye on it. Regardless of your view, if you're bullish or bearish in gold, this level is important today. So then moving on to the FX pairs. So euro dollar to finish things up. Uh, bounced off the session lows uh, around about 1.06. It is going to feel the pressure around about 108. I've, I've, I've rebalanced or redrawn the support and resistance levels on euro dollar uh, to take the tip of the candle from May 27th. Uh, and as you can see, it matched up quite nicely to, uh, to July and also where we are just now in November. Longer term potential support, one spot, 0524. So then moving on to GBP USD to finish things off. Um, we've managed to uh, break above one spot 51.73 uh, last week. We're still keeping our head above there just now. There could be a slight drift if the US dollar does become flavor of the month as a safe haven asset class, uh, where we could see a slight drift back down to one spot 51.72, uh, 71, sorry. Uh, and it's when we get to here that things get a bit more interesting. These doji formations just now just show an unwillingness to push on higher for GBP. 
But let's have a look at the macroeconomic data. So today brings you a whole host of uh, Eurozone CPI. Uh, that's pretty much it. And that's at 10 a.m. UK time. And if you go on to Tuesday, we've got uh, UK CPI, PPI, and RPI. So a whole host of quite important data for the UK. That could be good for, uh, G for GDP USD. You have the Z ZEW business report, very important German data. And then you've got um, the consumer price index for the US at 1.30 UK time on Tuesday. And then if you go on to Wednesday, then we've got our, our crude oil inventories have switched back from, from, from Thursday to, to Wednesday. So we're back to crude oil Wednesday. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect uh, to start off the week. Um, make sure you keep your eye on the chart forum. Make insights part of your layout going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.